Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus Channel, Bears Podcast by a Bears Fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today we are getting into the film session of Layatu Latu from UCLA. Um, before we get started, people, we are close to the draft. Um, I see a lot of people asking me questions that I've answered already. Um, check out the content, the content is there. Um, more than likely whatever you ask me is out there um i've put out multiple things talking about the number nine pick i put out multiple things talking about my thoughts on different prospects whether it be in the community whether it be in actual videos and episodes so check that stuff out more than likely the answer is out there all right so we are looking at lot two today uh we're gonna start with usc and i picked usc just because this was the one that had the uh tight camera angle and that was really it so we're going to go through a little bit of that and then we're also going to check him out against oregon state because they got um top rated tackle so you know that's always good to see um players against the best competition so yeah let's go ahead and get this started as i said before latu is a, a person that i really enjoy you know, he's just a weird prospect. I mean, you got a guy that I think is definitely um, the best pass rusher in the group. But it's two things, really. But number one is the injury. And that is by far the biggest thing. That That is just is, is more important to me, I should say. It's always been important to the league. But it's more important to me in terms of not only draft position, but... Um, if you actually want a player on the team because yeah you can have a lot of great traits and talents um but if you can't be on the field no matter what it is then it don't matter the greatest ability is availability so um having something as serious as a medical retirement especially because of a spinal injury is absolutely the reddest flag you can have so i i really don't know how teams are going to view him so for me it, he almost doesn't become part of the conversation because that is such a a devastating injury that could absolutely have long lasting effects or be re-aggravated at any point in a football or a sport like football where you're playing on the edge so um yeah it's just hard for me to really like uh dig into having him on the team seriously but he he has great tape he has great tape the other issue for me is that i've seen guys like him i've seen guys that have like elite level pass rushing ability in terms of technique and all of that but they don't mean much or i wouldn't say they don't mean much they don't translate into the nfl um the technique and all that is cool but if you just don't have the package the athletic package and everything to go with it it, it just won't matter. I mean, people, you think about Aaron Donald, which is obviously the apex. But even you think about Aaron Donald coming out, despite short arms, you know, undersized, uh, short, all that. The thing about it is he has he had elite strength. I mean, you're talking about a guy that that's up there with like a Larry Allen. <laughs> and so to have that elite pack or that elite trait that's going to translate and then obviously the best pass rushers they have the whole elite package so i've seen guys like that and that you know as i say or i don't know if i said it on here i always forget where i say stuff but the advantage of me one of the biggest advantages of me doing this stuff because a lot of people on the internet just like to hate of course and it's just like, who, who are you? Who are you? The the biggest advantage, I would say, is not like, oh, I just know more. Is that I've made more mistakes than most of you. And because of those mistakes, I have many years of lessons learned and what not to fall for, what to actually look for. And this is one of them. I fell a couple times for pass rushers in college that they were they were elite they were spectacular but it didn't translate to the league because i'm looking at their production and kind of how they won in college and not projecting into what they have to do against nfl teams and that's why i say college production is not a huge deal for me um like it is for some people so 
Not to say that he's any of those things. The conversation for Latu for me starts with the injury and ends with the injury. But uh, it's good tape, so I'm excited to uh, share with everybody. So let's go ahead and get this started. So we know it says pass rush, but we've seen that they'll put some run plays in there. And so the first thing on this first play that I'll show is the hand usage. First of all, the creativity. We got a jump chop. Now that that jump move has came popular in the last seven years or so. And we got another one. Now uh, you had Robert Quinn that really started that off a, a bit ago, but it's become more popular. But not everybody could do it, man. It takes timing. It takes athleticism, all that good stuff. So you see him utilizing some creative moves here. Inside hand, hand down, hits the uh, lean on the edge immediately. This this is elite stuff. This is elite stuff when it comes to technique. Remember, I always tell you, technique, athleticism, IQ, uh, football personality. So technique-wise, this is elite. Hands come up, put that hand down. Now, this is where the pass rushers are made. Once you make contact with the hands, can your feet move in unison? And it's almost similar to a quarterback or even a tackle almost. Once your uh, upper body moves, can you have your lower body move with it? So hands, good. Now with the feet, keep it going. Drive through, run it around the circle. And I'm telling you, that's going to get you sacks in the league. All right, so we got a, a run play, and I like that too. Now, he gets a little high at the end, but this shows me he understands the angles because he's not the edge guy. Obviously, somebody's out here, but he's playing basketball. Box him out. One hand, stiff, stiff arm him, basically. Keep the free hand open in the gap. So now, if the ball comes into my gap, I'm ready to collapse, make the tackle. That's good stuff. Now, can you do that against NFL guys? That would be a question. But that's at least he knows the technique and he understands the angle. So one-on-one -on, -one on the inside. And again, bull rush. It was okay, but the finish. Hands off to the quarterback. This tells you his mentality. All right, so we got inside move. I'm not sure who's supposed to be on the edge here. But he's doubled up. Didn't really do anything on the initial rush, but we see the motor there. And that was poorly designed because somebody was supposed to be on the edge. So again, another inside stunt. Now, I would like to see him be lower. He's standing up, still getting hands off, but I would like to see him on a stunt get low. Use that shoulder, rip and lean. On the inside again, on the zone, hands off able to get in on that play obviously the rest of everybody was making that play too but I, th I would say he's the primary person make that bounce back and you don't get a lot of guys you get guys that got good technique on a pass rush but you don't get a lot of guys that are constantly getting off blocks and so even plays like that now uh he's one of the, i would say again one of the primary reasons that play gets blown up but you see not only is this guy holding him 70 but then he's got 76 coming for a double team why is he able to get past this because his feet won't stop moving and i just feel like this is a, a love letter to all my defensive line friends and coaches and still players i keep telling y'all always move your feet towards the play especially against offensive linemen because they tend to stop their feet and let you just go win always move your feet all right so this pass rush here wasn't able to win this he went for speed the power he countered with the swim but the running back came and obviously caleb completely moved the pocket so he wasn't gonna get him anyway but this is what I'm talking about. This speed, the power here, and, and none of these guys on USC are like top guys. So speed, the power, is not impressive. I mean, it, it was all right. The counter is what's impressive, but 
when I talk about his athleticism, I say he's a good athlete. I wouldn't say he's very good, great, elite. He's he's good. And you see that with that speed of power. Now, when he's moving, when he's coming downhill, getting hands off, good stuff. When he's just trying to bully guys, it's not going to be there. And this is USC. So we saw that. If you didn't, we'll go through. Knowing the angles. Knowing how to slice through here. Get skinny. Get skinny. Get skinny. He's trying to he's trying to get to the quarterback like he's trying to block a kick. And, and that's what you want. So now he's on the inside technique. Still able to be effective. So again, you got to understand the position to see the play within the play. This is a guy that understands angles and will continue to get to the quarterback or to the play. And that is not, that's not something you see a lot. I mean, we watched Dallas Turner, if y'all watched that one. The man stops a lot. So here... Doesn't get the hands off, but now he gets low, puts that shoulder, and he's going to rip and lean. Now, again, Caleb is doing a good job here because you're learning something about Caleb, too. Because Caleb's stepping up in the pocket and taking away that uh, angle to the quarterback. Quick win, quick win on the swim right there. Caleb just rolls out, but that's what you like. That That's the type of pressure you like. That's a one move win. Set him up, boom. Hand like, look. When it's it's guys that want to come up to you, contact you, and make a move that are average. It's guys that are making a move while running past you <laughs> that make elite guys. And we saw that similar in that last play again, third time in a row, line up inside. This time it's a double team. And you see him still bear crawling. He's still trying to get to the quarterback. That's the motor you need. All right, so we see that jump move again. Hands go. Ricochet again. Caleb Williams. For those that think this man is not a lead in the pocket. Because <laughs> if this is not Caleb Williams, this, this is probably a sack. And again, the offensive line doesn't do a great job of communicating, but I, again, I would say Latu with a good pass rush plan there. That one, I don't think he had much of a plan. Tackle did a good job. So then we got another drop back. But again, attacking that upfield shoulder. Now that tackle, 71 did a good job at the end. Because that, that could have been a play for Latu. But even though he doesn't defeat the hands, he's going to keep working upfield. You see the angles. He's flipping his hips so that the angle stays on the track to the quarterback. Now, instead of keeping his um, inside shoulder up and running this way, which then would make him get ran out by the tackle, he's flipping his hips, and he's going to keep sidestepping to keep on a sharp path to the quarterback. And then the tackle at the last second runs it down and gets in his way, which was a good play by him. All right, so next play, it's like a play action. Man, and you look. I want you to notice, look at where Caleb is when he makes this throw. Caleb is like almost directly where his guard and center are. He's so tight to the line of scrimmage. If Caleb was at a regular depth, that would have been a sack by Latu. All right, so another play action, another inside rep. I mean, the only thing I'll say, I, don't, I forgot how tall he is. He does stand up a lot. Now, Aaron Donald does the same thing at certain points, but Aaron Donald's probably like 5'11", to be honest. And Latu, I think, is taller than that. But either way, I like to see him get a little bit lower, but we see he's still been effective. So like this, he's just moving his feet. He missed on the, the move. 
He's just moving his feet. These two guys are just not good. In the league, that's not happening. You're going to have to dip and and um, get a lot more leverage to get through that gap. So I like the mentality, but yeah. <laughs> we'll have to turn it up a little bit. I will watch a few more plays with USC because I want to get to Oregon State that does have a good offensive line. So now they're chipping them. They was able to win there. Didn't really have a plan for them. All right, we got the extra tight end helping. And once again, just bad execution by UCLA, man. I don't know what's supposed to happen here, but I know all these guys aren't supposed to be going inside. <laughs> Somebody's supposed to come outside. So now we got an outside rusher. So Latu's taking the inside. And again, I mean, terrible by the offensive line. I can't, I mean, Latu, he did his thing. It was fine. But the guard let him go and the tackle didn't even help. So I, I just got to get that to the O-line. Let's see if we could get a, a legit play. So pass rush. Feast the tackle, running back, comes in to help. I think he made that sack. Look at that, the very next play. So tackle does a good job, gets hands on him, but he's not able. Now you lie to gets low. He starts leaning that corner. Tackle's not able to stay balanced. Running back tries to help, but lie to man. That's that's good balance. That's good strength. That's good everything. All right, so now we're going to jump over to Oregon State. We got Fuaga at the right tackle. Unfortunately, it's not as crisp, but hey, it is what it is. So we had a quick pass. He tries that jump attack again, but it's a quick pass. He ends up tripping anyway, so we're not sure what he would have been able to do off of that. But it was a tight space. So now we got a regular drop back. Now again, a quarterback. It's still a short pass, so the arc to the quarterback is very tight. Gets the edge on Fuaga, but not enough. At this point, in order, I mean, you probably won't make it to the quarterback. But in order to make it there, you're going to have to get real low and real skinny to beeline here. Otherwise, standing up like this, too much of a target. Fuaga just able to wash him out. So pass rush. Again, some type of mis-executed stunt. We got guys running into each other. Now we got a zone look. Fuaga, uh, he gets them. Obviously, I think the strength differential is there. But again, you see counter back inside, back to the play, shows you the motor. A lot of guys, and I mean a lot, would have just stopped and been like, okay, I'm blocked. All right, so this one, let's see, down block, kick out, completely whiffed. In on that play, I mean, come on, <laughs> it, it got out. I, I really don't think tight ends and running backs could do anything with Latu. Now, this is a good ability of him in space again, not an elite athlete, solid. You see him, recognize it, redirect. He's dropping off coverage, see it, redirect. Dude is illegally blocking him that whole time, and he gets in on that play. That's great recognition. That's good uh, open field ability. So now I like that. And again, we got people running into each other. It's very annoying. But I like this. Watch Fuaga. As some people will say, he stones this pass rush. And for most people, it would be stoned. Boom, punch. Strong punch. Stop this man dead in his tracks. And if, like I said, for a lot of people, pass rush would have been over. For a lot too. Boom, grabs both wrists, counters, throws the hands off, ricochets back in. If his own man wasn't there, 
he might have had a chance to make that into a pass rush. But again, having a counter move to your primary move on a natural, you know, tendency on contact, that's 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 advanced stuff. So now he's on the left side. I don't know what that is. You, it's starting to piss me off. <laughs> UCLA starting to piss me off. You got so many people running into the same area. So anyway, one on one with the guard here. Again, initial move stop. Good counter back inside to affect the quarterback. And I'm not sure which one of these guards. I know. I believe one of these guards is um, supposed to be drafted in the top 150. So there he gets stoned, again, working inside. He works inside a lot in the UCLA scheme, which you won't see in the NFL. Not, not the same way. So this play, a little late, initial contact, looking to make space or to hold space in case it's a run. Sees it's a pass, immediately converts. Come on now. Come on. Like, no head of steam. He's playing the run. Boom. I'm two gapping. I'm two gapping in my eye front. Okay, pass. Up. Oh, immediately convert. Let me get that hand over. Move my hips. Rip. And I'm gone. Dude is chasing me now. Now it's too late. He makes the play. But or the pass. But man, come on. That's good stuff. Tight end has no shot. Look at that. Hands off. 67. I can't see. Leaning. Whoop! Leaning right past him. Tight end has no shot. Hands, his hands is is, is elite. I, I have to say that his hands are elite. All right, solo rush. Oh man. Oh man. The jump move, as we saw. Setting up people for a counter, but this time he beats him on the primary. Quarterback has dropped that depth, and 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 this is the little bit of hey. Caleb Williams, Bears fans, because, again, I mean, he had nowhere to step up. I mean, not here, but when you stay at depth and you don't know how to work the pocket, you make it an easy target for pass rushers. So, great move by Latu there. One we've seen him do, kind of that jump and rip. Now this, he gets double team, gets taken out the club. Ain't much you could do like that. Fuaga's already 10 times stronger than him, plus he had a tight end with him. All right, pass rush. And again, that's, I mean, that's good angles. Like I said, I know they're stronger than him, Fuaga especially. Um, but just using, I don't know why it keeps doing it. Just using your angles. So now he counters inside because he can't get the edge. Now he's got a helper. And the guard, so it's double team. Now he's still going to turn his shoulders at the right angle where he could use his leg power to push into because it's, it's going to be different for him to push his whole body into Fuaga rather than just using his arms. So now he's going to turn his shoulders, so it's hard for 66 to get a, a good grasp on him, but he's also able to bully his shoulder into Fuaga. So he's able to push this gap. He might not push past them, but he could push this gap. And that's exactly what he does to help affect the throw. That's just understanding angles. Again, immediately off, 67 is leaning. Has no type of control. <laughs> that is easy for him. He's already got a guy on his back. And look, he doesn't have to make the play, but having an extra guy unblocked is always going to help. As as a D-line coach that I knew used to say, change the math. They draw it up. This guy for this, one for one, two for one, whatever. We change the math. All right, so 67 is now at tackle. Didn't really have a move on that last one. It looks like he tripped a little bit. Oh, no, he just misses. He just misses. But he has that good counter. All right. I'm guessing there's another play, but this this big thing in the way, so I'm not going to worry about it. But, yeah, so that's a lot, too. Um, man, I got excited watching, but I, I was happy to do it because I love this tape so much. 
it's always fun breaking down pass rush because it, it is not an easy thing to explain. But yeah, like I said in the beginning, man, excellent tape. Just a weird prospect because I, I would say this: if if Latu was a little more twitchy athletic wise. Um, I wouldn't even say straight speed, like the 40s, whatever. But if he had like a, a crazy three cone um, or if he had like a crazy broad jump, vertical jump, I think the conversation would be different because it's not. I mean, in the draft, it a lot of it is trying to convince yourself of something. Now, that shouldn't be a habit, but with certain players, you got to convince yourself to take them. And so our players got to convince yourself why we shouldn't take them. And so with Latu, like those numbers would go a long way for certain teams. For me, I watched the film and I, again, he's a good athlete. If he had a crazy three cone, I wouldn't be like, oh, he's an elite athlete. I wouldn't change my mind. But if he just had some of that change of direction, some of that twitchiness, that would be enough of a reason I think for some people to be more comfortable with the medicals because it's like, yo, his tape is crazy and he is like a supreme athlete. Latu's not a supreme athlete to me. Um, and I think that's what makes this conversation so tough. Um, like I said, I've seen some pass rushing, some some dynamic pass rushers. I wouldn't say that they were better than La uh, Latu. I would say they were close. I think he's a little more refined. He's done a lot more advanced things. But I've seen guys that were up there and just didn't make it in the league because they just weren't the athletes. And so it, it's a tough conversation. But I think for me to feel comfortable, I would have to take them lower. And, and it, it pretty much is like the the risk of it all i mean if someone is they have something that makes them a flyer i gotta take them later because i have to be able to justify yeah i didn't use my top 10 pick on a guy that never saw the field because of his injuries we all know how that goes in the bears world so uh yeah i just i i would have to be later in the first to early second to take lot to but I mean, I think he absolutely has everything to be a, a really good player. We, we just got to see how the medicals and everything holds up. So anyway, that's it for me. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and remember, stay up and bear down.